Well, I think it's time to go for the first drive in the old square body truck. So let's get her started and see how she works with this new EFI. So probably the number one thing that I'm really gonna enjoy about this EFI system from Fitech is no more cold starts. Totally. That's awesome. Anyways, let, let's get this thing out for a drive, see how she performs. I'm uh, pretty excited to see uh, just how she's gonna drive down the road. So as we're taking a cruise down through uh, Queen Street here, just heading towards the main drag, one thing I'll notice is that the transmission is actually shifting, which means I've got the TV cable adjusted properly. Now, I didn't show you guys how to do that, but it's a pretty simple procedure, and uh, one of these days, maybe I'll make a video about just how easy it is. Um, anyways, we're cruising along, we're in third gear. I'm gonna wait till we get on the highway before I give her any beans, but uh, where this is just being kind of the first drive, I don't want to be honking on it all at once here. I at least want to get out of town and maybe get out of the way in case something happens. <laughs> and she stalled. I'm not sure if that's just part of the whole learning process, if the idle's just simply set too low or what, but it stalled twice on me, once when I came out of the stop sign by my street and then once there at the stoplight. So we'll see what happens when we go to gear down to the next stop sign or stoplight, who knows? And it looks like that one's gonna stay green. Red light. Man, she wants to stall. Again? Not again. And she stalled. That's a little bit annoying. And she's running a little bit on the rich side. The uh, the IAC steps are at like 127. They're supposed to be like between seven and 10. That is one thing that uh, isn't very clear in the uh, setup procedure, but uh, we've got to figure out what's going on with that. So anyways, we're getting out on the highway and we'll see what kind of speed she works like and how she reacts. Give her a little kick down once we get past the speed limit sign here. But this is all new to me, guys. I'm learning too, just like you are. Um, if you own one of these Fitech or even some other brand and you've experienced these uh, high IAC steps, leave a comment down the uh, comment box and let me know what you did to adjust that properly and uh, without having the uh, increase the idle too much. So. I'm gonna give her a little step down to see what she does. She just she wants to die and backfire. Son of a biscuit. But just idling along, I mean it works great. She's down a shifter. Works good that way, but. I think we might have a few bugs still to work out of it. We'll uh, pull into the shop. Get no throttle there at all. And she died again. What is going on here? Good thing there's nobody behind us.
And as we pull into the shop, she dies again. <laughs> no power steering. Don't hit that car. <laughs> no brakes either. Screech. It seems to be up, up the temperature. It's got lots of voltage, lots of oil pressure. I don't know what's going on with this thing. AFR right now at idle is 13.56765. Um, IAC steps just sitting here idling, like 120. It's idling RPMs at about um, 8, 850. So. I'm going to double check the uh, setup in it, make sure it didn't lose its initial setup. Well, maybe it wouldn't have started if I hadn't, if I didn't have anything in there, but we'll go through those steps and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we've got this thing out here and uh, I just adjusted the idle back a little bit, meaning I dropped the RPMs and I went back into the relearn for the IAC control or the idle control and I reset it. I started all over again and when I did that, I was able to get those IAC steps down to about five or six, which is right where they tell you it should be. It should be anywhere between three and 10, and that's that's pretty good the way it's idling right there. Idle is holding pretty steady at about uh, 850 or so. So let's close the hood and take it down the road for the rip and see what happens, see if she's still stalling on us. And one thing I'll notice almost immediately once getting that set up properly, is no more rich gassy smell and it's not puffing you know a little bit of smoke like it was earlier running very very rich anyways let's go for a ride well that certainly made a difference picked it right up so what we got to do now is we've got to see if it's going to stall on us when we stop. Now there's a, I guess that truck must have turned off. I know one thing I forgot to hook back up when I was hooking the vacuums up, and that was the uh, the overdrive, the vacuum that controls the overdrive. Dang it! I've only got third gear right now, which is no big deal. Uh, we'll get that fixed up after a bit. Slowing down, and she's died. I don't know what's making it die, if it's a vacuum leak or what it might be. Anywho, we know we've got a few things that we've got to look after and uh, one of them is the stalling when I slow down, not sure what's up with that. Seriously, you seriously don't know. I've got my foot into it a little bit as I slow down here and she wants to die again but she didn't. Um, yeah, we've got a few things to figure out, play around with it, and learn. Man, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Anyways, we're still learning, guys. It's time to uh, find out what's going on with this, and uh, 
maybe seek a little bit of help from my buddy Dean uh, who put one of these uh, systems on his uh, on his twin turbo OBS truck stalled again anywho we will uh, we'll get an update and we'll see what's going on well here I am on the side of the on-ramp and she won't start. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Come around this corner. Uh, it died like it like it's been doing, and I haven't been able to get it to restart since. Normally, if it stalls, you just cycle the key, start it up, and away you go. And it's getting cold, and she's getting dark. Anyways, we'll figure it out. The junior's the rescue. Junior's got his bag of goodies here. We're gonna give her a boost. Maybe I'll have to get towed too. I saw sparkage. Doing the same thing. Is that what I was doing? Only it was losing battery. Stupid things. How was it running when, it, when you were driving it? Oh, well, it ran good. Did it, did it just cut out on you? When you're pulling up here? So, yeah, it's coming around the corner like I said, it stalled. So, not sure if you guys can see me very well or not, but uh, Junior come out. We tried putting the booster cables on it uh, because the battery was getting weak from me cranking on it so much. And uh, he made the suggestion that, do you think it's possibly out of gas? No. Do you think? And I'm thinking there's no way that I burnt through five gallons of uh, gas in this truck just idling in the driveway or in the garage. But it stands to reason that if that was the case, it makes sense. When I put my foot on the brake and come to a stop, all that fuel, or what little fuel is in the car, or in the tank, was uh, rolling forward away from the pump and, well, dying out. So I sent Junior into the house to grab a five gallon jug of the gas that we actually took out of the tank originally. We'll dump it in, we'll give her a start and see if that's what's going on. Cross your fingers, guys, because the sun is gone down, and uh, she's getting cold in here. Anywho, um, hoping that's as simple as that, that it's out of gas, and I don't know if my gas gauge, I, mean, I, know, I know my gas gauge isn't working, um, because we did make a couple of attempts to get the gas tank back up underneath the truck, and one of those times I must have accidentally pulled on the uh, ground strap that uh, grounds the ascending unit, so. Uh, no gas gauge, I can't verify that we're out of gas, but nevertheless, uh, I'm only a couple minutes away from home, so just, you know, a couple miles down the road. Hopefully Junior gets the gas gauge, and gas gauge, hopefully gets the gas can. We'll dump five gallons in her, hopefully she'll start right up. Anyways, you guys will be along for that. Well, Junior was right. It's amazing what five gallons of gas will do for you. Not much. <laughs> Anyways, we put five gallons of gas in it, primed it three or four times, started right up. So lesson learned, get the gas gauge fixed before you go for a cruise. Anyways, I'm headed to the gas station right now. We're gonna fill this sucker up and head her home. Thank you, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, uh, I'll take that gas can. Well, that's a little bit humbling. 
So what did you guys learn from this tonight? Well, I hope that you learned to make sure you have a working gas gauge before you go out on a maiden voyage with a new EFI system. And by no means should this be a reflection on Flytech because this is totally not their fault. It has nothing to do with their equipment. It's totally 100% this guy. Um, yeah, so Junior was right. It was fuel. And like I said before, it makes sense that when I was putting my foot on the brake and all that fuel was sloshing to the front away from the pickup, uh, maybe mounting it in the rear of that tank wasn't the best idea. Anywho, it basically will tell us one thing. Once we get the gas gauge fixed up, and if that issue starts, we'll be able to note where it starts on the fuel gauge. Uh, my guess is, is that it'll start happening probably right around an eighth of a tank. So um, knowing that we can get this thing full of gas and get that gas gauge working, we'll, we'll figure out what's going on with it, guys. And uh, hopefully... Uh, sooner than later. What a treat it was to drive this because once I did get it working again and get out on that highway, there's two or three times I come aboard this thing and man, she just downshifted and away it went. Pulled away from the stop sign there when we come off the highway and she she barked, she lit right up. Um, so much more responsive than the Quadrajet and the Edelbrock. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, they weren't properly set up and properly tuned. You know what? They probably weren't. I'm not, I don't know. How to, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to set those things up. Anyway, um, at some point, I, I'll, I will force myself to, uh, to learn. And uh, anyways, full tank of gas. We're going to get the gas gauge working. I can't wait until we get some really good weather. Uh, the sun's shining, you can drive with the windows down again and get this thing out and just burn it into it. Man, what a fun ride. <laughs> Once we got it going. Uh, that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this little, whatever you want to call it, adventure. And uh, keep in mind that the Car Guy and Six Fan Show next week is going to be on Grant Tommy's uh, channel, where we do have, yet again, another guest. I hope you'll tune into that. Over on his channel, I'll stick it right up here so you can head over there and subscribe to him. He's got some cool stuff going on with some welding as well as his uh, 78 Ford Fairmont. That's all I got for you guys. I also want to remind you guys that old car guy merch, t-shirts, Dale tees, uh, and, and uh, channel tees are available. Not like this. This is not mine. This is SQRB wise. Uh, you can get those at his channel too. The link is the first one in the description box below. I hope you can go support the channel with more ways than just watching these videos, which I really appreciate. We are on that goal uh, to hit 21,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon with gas in the tank.